to the God of heaven for blessing us to be on this time side one more time. Amen. God's blessings uh, are reigning uh, throughout this land because of the fact that we're here. We're on this side of the earth. And for that, we are sure of thankful. To all of our fathers, happy Father's Day. Amen. This is the day that the world celebrates fathers, and we're thankful to all of our fathers uh, who are here uh, on this morning, and uh, we'll be saying a little bit more about that a little later uh, in the service. But let me just say, did y'all see more than one commercial about Father's Day? Who, who saw more than one commercial? Y'all see what I'm talking about, brother? Y'all see how, how they do us? But, but I got you. Everybody got you. All right. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing. Thank God for our men, for our brothers. And uh, we, uh, we are thankful to God always for his grace and mercy. To all of you who are visitors, you are very special and honored guests. And to those who are worshiping with us uh, online as our guests, we're so happy to have you. On this morning, God is a God of love, and we ought to be thankful that He loves us in spite of us, because we are often not lovable, but in spite of us, God still loves us anyhow, and that's how He wants us to love one another, just like He loves us, because God is love. Say this with me: We love God. because God first loved us. Point at all your neighbors around you and say, I love you. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen, somebody. Amen. And because we serve a loving God, uh, He loves us enough to provide us with this avenue of prayer. And because we have this powerful uh, tool as Christians called prayer, whatever we face in life, we can talk to God and tell him all about it. He'll see us through it, won't it? Amen. amen, amen. So on this morning, we, as always, uh, want to take this privilege uh, before we go into worship to talk to God in prayer. First of all, give him thanks for all of his blessings and to lift up these various prayer requests before the throne. And we ask that you pray along with us uh, on this morning. And if uh, uh, you can do so, uh, please take down all of these various prayer requests uh, in your prayer journal or a pad or whatever you might have. And then in your personal private prayers, uh, go to God on behalf of all of these uh, who have made their requests known and we know God will hear and he will answer. Amen. Continue to be in prayer for Brother Isla Smith, uh, who is home uh, from the hospital and doing much better. Uh, amen. I had an opportunity to talk with him last week and he uh, certainly wants to thank uh, the entire Bulbar family for your prayers and calls and concerns. And let's continue to lift him up in prayer uh, that all will continue to go well with him. Sister Edna Key had to go to the emergency room uh, last week, I believe it was last Sunday and uh, last Saturday, but she is home now and uh, she is doing better. So let's be in prayer for Sister Edna Key. Uh, continue to be in prayer for uh, Brother Casey and Sister Shirley and Williams, and Tyler Williams family uh, as they uh, grieve the loss their son Vincent, uh, and uh, we have information that will be shared with you today. You probably have already received the information via text, but we will rehearse that into your memory again uh, on today regarding the graveside services uh, and uh, the, the wake uh, on tomorrow. But let's just lift up uh, this family in, in, in our prayers. We all love Brother and Sister Shirley. 
girls dealing. And uh, so sure that the end day, as y'all know, we got you. We got you. Uh, God will see you through. Sister Sherry Kennedy uh, and Brother Ron Brown, they are both in uh, rehab and, and uh, doing well, so let's continue to lift them up in prayer uh, that all will continue to go well with their rehab and recovery and uh, that soon they will be able to be uh, back home. Sister Shirley Kemp is requesting prayer uh, for the Kemp family, the McIntyre family, uh, and the Nunnally family as they travel out of town. So let's be in prayer for, for them uh, as they travel. Uh, receive word that uh, Brother Gil Oates is dealing with uh, some sickness as an infection, but he is okay. Uh, he's not in the hospital. So let's be in prayer for Brother Gil Oates and Sister Oates. Uh, everything continues to go well with uh, Brother Oates' uh, help. The Reed family is also traveling uh, out of town uh, on today, so let's lift them up in prayer. Uh, Brother David Davis and Sister Pearl Davis, uh, the Jackson family, and Sister Patricia Green, who, uh, who has been visiting with us uh, for some time now from Midtown. This is also the sister of Brother David Davis. They are all traveling uh, out of town and uh, all requesting prayer. Also, Brother Davis is requesting prayer for his son, Cody, uh, that God will direct his path, and for his son, Christopher, uh, who uh, has some legal concerns. So let's be in prayer for the Davis, the Green, and the Jackson family as they travel. Uh, as well as prayers for their son, Coley, and Christopher. And also, of course, all of our Boulevard family uh, who stand in need of prayer. Uh, all of us stand in need of prayer. Let's uh, be in prayer, especially for those who are sick and shut in. Uh, let's continue to lift up for Carl Williams uh, in our prayers, Sister uh, Triplett. Uh, and others who are sick and infirm, uh, that God will continue to bless uh, in a powerful way. Go with us just now as we go to the throne of God in prayer. <clears throat> the time of God, our Father, we're so thankful for this blessed privilege that you have uh, given unto us to again stand before your majestic throne, call on your holy name, Thank you, Father, for being a uh, loving and powerful and awesome God. More than that, we thank you for being our God. We thank you, Father, for uh, from the genesis of time, uh, you have allowed us uh, this privilege of being able to uh, come to you and pour out our petitions before your throne. And you have ears that are always listening and arms that are always outstretched, ready to help in time of need. And so we come this morning on behalf of many who have made their request known. Father, we continue to be in prayer for Brother Alan Smith. Uh, we thank you for blessing him to uh, be home. And we ask that you will continue to bless his health, that he will continue to grow stronger. We ask that you bless him and all will continue to go well uh, with him and that soon you will be able to be back with the people of God in this place. We thank you for blessing Sister Edna Key to uh, be able to be home and we ask that you will continue to bless her health, uh, that all will continue to go well with her and that she will continue uh, to grow stronger. Father, for the Williams family, Brother KC, Sister Shirley, and uh, for all of the girls, uh, comfort them and give them strength. Uh, as only you can, help the Father hold on to your unchanging hands as they go through this season. And, uh, we ask uh, that you bless us as extended family to 
be a leading host for them, to be a source of strength and comfort and help us to know what to say and what to do. And Father, help them to know that uh, they're not alone. Help them to know, Father, that uh, they have a family, a spiritual family, uh, who is on this journey with them. And we just ask that you bless in a special way. Father, for uh, many of us who are sick among us, uh, Sister Sherry Kennedy, Brother Ron Brownlee, Brother Carl Williams, uh, Sister Tish Triplett, uh, so many others, Father, who are suffering from uh, illnesses and infirmities, please restore the help if it is your holy and divine will. And for those who are hospitalized, Father, our prayers is that all will continue to go well with them and that uh, they will soon be able to be back home with their families. Father, for those who are traveling, uh, we ask for traveling grace and protection uh, as they travel to many places in this nation. Uh, bless them, uh, protect them where they are, and then uh, at the appointed time as they travel back home, uh, bless them with traveling grace that they will arrive home safely and find all we know uh, when they return. Uh, we especially think of the Reed family, the Davis, Jackson, and Green family, uh, the Kemp, Nunnally, and the McIntyre family, and others uh, who might be traveling. Please just bless and protect in a powerful way. Be with the sons of brother and sister. Uh, Davis, Colin, guide and direct his paths uh, and bless him to uh, do the things that are right and pleasing in your sight. And then for uh, the son of Christopher, Father, uh, you know what his concerns are, what his needs are, particularly as it pertains to legal matters. Uh, bless as you see fit and bless that all will go well. Father, we just ask that you be with this entire boulevard body. We all stand in need of your blessings. We all uh, wrestle with Satan. We all face challenges in our lives. But oh God, we, we thank you for this privilege of being able to serve you because we know that there is nothing too hard for you. So we cast all our cares on you because we know you care for us. Now, God, as we prepare to worship you on this morning, assist us in removing all thoughts that are foreign and help us to focus solely on giving you the worship that you desire, that is, in spirit and in truth. May we be edified, may the devil be horrified. But most of all, may your mind and name glorified. It's a mighty marvelous, matchless name of the life giver King Jesus. In Jesus' name, let us together say, Amen. I woke up this morning with my mind, my mind was a stain on Jesus. Yes, you know I woke up this morning with my mind, my mind was a stain on the Lord. Oh, yeah. 
Text our fifth man that might be his family. Continue to inspire Mike our Father to teach words and lessons that give us direction and give us hope. And give us a knowledge of your word, your will, and your word, so that we can apply it in our personal lives and we can share it with others. Father, we pray for our communities and for our school system. That you will continue to bless those people who teach, who get up every day and make the effort to go out and help our young people to prepare them and prepare their minds for the future and understanding. We pray for those, Father, who are nursing homes, Father, who are going through illnesses, whether it be a nursing home or home. Pray for all of those who are taking care of them, that they might provide for them an avenue of health and strength and strengthen them, Father, while they are suffering. Father, I have a personal prayer for my brother, uh, Norman, who is suffering heart attacks. We just pray that you will continue to strengthen him and help him, Father, to endure and overcome his illnesses. Father, we pray for our leadership in our country. We know that our president traveled around the world last week trying to create an atmosphere of peace and understanding with other nations. Oh Lord, we need you. We need you in our political circles. We need you in our communities. We need you in our families. We need you in our personal lives. So give us a better understanding to understand your will and your way so that we can apply the righteousness of God to everything that we do. We strive, Father, for your faith, but we know that faith will come by understanding. We pray that you will continue to strengthen us as men with understanding of grace and mercy so that we'll learn how to better serve you and serve our families. We're thankful for this day that we celebrate men, but we celebrate men every day, Father, because you have called men to lead. You have called us to have understanding and compassion. You have called us to set examples. We just pray as we so live that you will continue to strengthen us in the church and help us to provide and by answers and guidance to others. Bless our young men throughout our neighborhood and our country. Oh Lord, as we hear this lesson this morning, we pray that you will open our hearts and our minds, help us to be receptive to of that of your word, to apply it to our lives, so it may give us peace and understanding. Oh Lord, we pray that every day that we live upon this world, that you help us to be, help us to strive to be more like Christ. For it is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray and give you thanks always. What be there for you know not the day oh, when the Lord shall call your soul away and if you labor striving for the light, then you shall wear a golden crown. You know that you shall, shall wear a crown. Galilee. 
called me a tempestuous storm. Came through, and the Bible says that Jesus was found in the boat to sleep. It woke him up. Said, Don't you care that we perish? The Bible says that Jesus just simply spoke to the wind and the rain and said, Peace. Be still. And it's interesting. You'd be interested to know that that phrase, peace be still, essentially means hush. <laughs> Put a muzzle on. That's why I'm not worried about nothing, about any of the challenges in life that I face. Whenever I go through a storm in my life, uh, whatever the challenge might be, I serve a God who is able to just speak and say, hush. Because there is no guidance that can 
thirds or a deterred brother the destruction of crime. 272 mass shootings so far this year. Something is wrong with it. Folk now fighting in the air on the airplane. When our families are suffering, our schools suffer because when there is no respect for authority uh, or at home there will be uh, no respect for authority at school. When our families are suffering, the church suffers because whatever is going on at the house eventually is going to show up at the church. While it might not be a guarantee for a successful family, but when God's plan of a two-parent family is father, a man and a woman. See, now you got to be specific. Y'all ain't hear me. But when God's plan of a two-parent family, man and a woman, man, the chances are a lot, lot better than society will be better. That's why I mean it. Can't be missing in action. Because our families are in need of fathers who are fixed in the faith. Two things that that will happen if we are fathers uh, who are fixed in the faith. First of all, we will be committed enough to care. And then secondly, as we try to close, uh, if we are fathers who are fixed in the faith, not only will we be committed enough to care, but we can't be cowards but courageous. As we labor under this thought, our families are in need of fathers who are committed and fixed in the faith. As Paul begins this discourse, Saints at Corinth, he, he addresses the collection for the poor saints that you did. So, beginning in verses 1 through 4, he gives specific instructions regarding the collection. The Bible says, and I am I'm reading this particular section of scripture from, from the NIV because believe that it'll, it'll make it a little easier, a little clearer uh, as to what Paul said particularly in these first four verses. He says now about the collection for God's people do what I told the Galatian churches to do. After having addressed in chapter 15 the doctrinal concerns among the Corinthian Christians, particularly the doctrine of the resurrection of the body, the last half of chapter 15, he now addresses the issue of helping others. And so he says in verse 1, now, after we talked about the doctrinal issue, now about the collection of God's people, do what I told the Galatian churches to do. On the first day <clears throat> of every week, each one of you, not some of y'all, <laughs> not a few, he says, on the first day of every week, each one of you, that means you, me, us, <laughs> should set aside, King James Version said, lay by him in store a sum of money in keeping with his income as God had prospered you, is what the King James Version says. And what that means is, he said, as God has prospered, uh, 
uh, in keeping uh, with your income as God prospers you, as God blesses you to be prosperous, as God increases your prosperity, you ought to increase your labor and store back to God. That's how it works. When, when God blesses you with more, if you love God, you give more back to Him. <laughs> Saving it up, He says, so that when I come, no connections will have to be made. Then when I arrive, I will give you letters of introduction, verse 3, to the men you approve and send uh, and send them with your gift uh, to Jerusalem. The church in the first century didn't just do stuff haphazardly. When they were, particularly when they were helping others, they would send me with the country and a letter to the congregation that they were trying to let them know what was going on. And Paul says in verse 4, if it seems advisable for me to go also, uh, if I need to go, they will accompany me. They didn't do stuff halfway. Then in verses 5 to 9, he talked about his travel plans. He says, now when I come into you, when I shall pass through Macedonia for I do pass through Macedonia, and it may be that I will abide, yea, and winter with you, that ye may bring me on my journey, whithersoever I go. I'm back to the King James Version, but I wanted you to understand that particular passage uh, and hear it from the NIV, because uh, some things we need to really have a clear understanding. Not just something, really everything. The Bible says, but I particularly wanted you to hear that from the NIV because I, I, I felt that it would be a little bit clearer. He says, verse 7, For I will not see you now, by the way, but I trust to tarry a while with you if the Lord permit. Paul says, I'm coming through Corinth, and I plan to stay a while with you if the Lord permit, because my plans might change. Here's, here's the reason why he says that, verse 8. But I will tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many adversaries. Paul says, while I'm planning to come spend me, Time with me. I'm tarrying, I'm going to tarry at Ephesus because an opportunity, a door has been opened for me to preach the gospel where I am currently. And, church, we need to understand uh, that uh, an opportunity to teach and preach the gospel will always supersede any personal plans that we might have. When God opens the door, I understand that sometimes we have plans to do stuff and we plan to go and spend time in other areas and we plan to go time and, and fellowship with other brothers and sisters in Christ. But when God opens the door for the gospel to be preached, we have to take opportunity to do what God wants us to do. And sometimes we got to put our personal plans on hold. That means uh, sometimes we got to make sacrifices. And see, that's where uh, not being selfish, get, getting the focus off of me and on God comes into play. Because see, if everything is about you, somebody will be in need of hearing the gospel. But because you want to fulfill your plan, Somebody said, I thought this was preaching about Father's Day. I'm on my way to that. <laughs> then, then in verses 10 through 12, we talked about receiving Timothy and to treat him with kindness and, uh, and not 
despise the cause of his youth. And in verse 12, he said that he had a desire that Apollos would come, but Apollos was not willing at that present time. Uh, perhaps uh, he would come later, he says. And you will remember in, in uh, chapter 1 of First uh, Corinthians, there was an issue of division and factions. And there were those who, uh, Paul says, Heartbroken because I hear that there are divisions, and I, I really kind of believe it because there are those who are who, who are following uh, Paulus, uh, there are those who are following other teachers, and, and, and so as a result of that, uh, there were factions uh, and divisions, and, and uh, some biblical scholars believe that perhaps the reason that uh, Paulus didn't come at that time is because he didn't want. Uh, to stir up that issue any further uh, because there were those who were following him. He didn't, he wanted to put this whole issue of factions to rest. And so in order to make sure that that would, he, he decided maybe to stay away and go a little later. Uh, Corinth was, was a commercial uh, metropolis. Uh, everything that went from one location to the next had to go through Corinth, somewhat like the city of Memphis. If you're going to go anywhere almost in this nation, from the west coast to the east coast, uh, you've got to come through Memphis. And so, uh, Corinth was a, a commercial city. It was a commercial metropolis. Uh, in Corinth uh, was the temple of Aphrodite. Uh, and this was a temple uh, known for prostitution. Because it was a commercial thing, uh, there, were, there were those who practiced their crap. And because uh, it was practiced on a regular basis, they erected a temple uh, to the Greek goddess uh, Aphrodite because uh, of uh, what they did what they had pride in, that they practiced uh, on uh, a regular basis. Hyrule was messed up. They had some problems. And because of all of the issues that the Hyrule faced, Paul gives admonition to Hyrule and to us, and especially to men and fathers, that we have to be fixed in the faith. And if we are fixed in the faith, we will be committed enough to care. So it says, part A of verse 13, watch you stand fast in the faith. He says, stay awake. It's, there, it's, it's what that word watch means. Be vigilant. Be alert. Somewhat of a military term. Be on guard. Fathers, Satan is after our families. He's after our children through predators. He is after our wives with car traffic. And he is after the church with false doctrine and worldly desire. And we have to be committed enough to care. We have to be committed enough to stay woke. We got to be alert. We got to be on guard because we have to look out for and protect our family, our children, our wives, the church, because there are all kinds of things going on in this society. Much like it was in Corinth. And God has called on us as men in particular, according to the text. But I believe we can use this principle to relate it to problems this morning. We have to be on the alert. We got to stay up. First, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 6 says, Therefore, let us not be sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. First Peter 5, verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, has a roaring lion. Walking about seeking whom he may 
the Bible. But then he says, stand fast. Be, be stationary. Be fixed. There it is. Be fixed. Is, is it, it's part of the definition of, of standing fast. Be fixed in the faith. If we are committed to caring for our families and the church, not only will we, will we be watchful and alert, but we will be fixed in the faith. We can't be uh, in half the time and out half the time. We can't try to hang with the world and then every now and then try to be hope. That ain't gonna work. No, we gotta be stationary. We can't be uh, swaying one direction part of the time and another direction the other. No, we have to be fixed and firm in the faith. James said in James 1, 63, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavered is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and host. For let not that man think that he will receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable. He ain't stationary. He ain't fixed. You can't count on him. You can't depend on him for nothing because he ain't stable. He is unstable in all his ways. This world that seemingly is at its worst needs fathers at their best. We need to be committed enough to care about our families, about our communities, about our fellow man, and we ought to care about protecting the church. And if we are to be successful, we can't be all over the place. We, uh, we, we can't be here and there and yonder and drifting in and out. But we have to be fathers who are fixed, stationary, firm, committed. Notion that what 
makes me a man, what makes me big and bad is to grab the dog. No, no. What makes you a man is to get a will put his trust in God. Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9. Man, have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Psalms 27, 14. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say. Oh.
and, and the sad thing is, my baby is, uh, uh, sisters, y'all go out and get these brothers. And they still doing the same thing. You doing all the work, he at home playing video. Won't cut the grass, won't wash your car, won't do nothing. Because there was probably nobody at the house. Daddy was mad to teach him how to be a man. Sisters, I know those of you who are single parents, many of you are doing a great job. You're doing the best. Many of you have taught your young men how to be men. But fathers, we need to step up. We, we got to do what, what God has put us in charge to do, which means we got to be there. We got to do what God has come. I'm going to quit. All of our fathers, all of our fathers, stand on your feet. All of our fathers, stand on your feet. Thank you for being fathers who are striving to be fixed in the table. Get on the table. Get on the knees. Don't quit, but quit like men. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your job. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you. God bless you. May God keep on blessing you to be the strong, faithful fathers that all of our families need. I'm talking to somebody today, maybe. Maybe, maybe that's right where you are. You, you discover that, that you, you're not being it. That, that father who is fixed in the faith, you're not being that father who, who is committed enough to care about taking care of your families, taking care of your wife, looking out for your children, serving the church. Maybe you discovered that uh, you, you kind of been tossed like a wave, you've been to and fro, you've been waiting. Come on, come on, ask your friends. Ask God to help you. Be that faithful father that your family needs, that the church needs, that God needs. This society, this community needs. If we go on haywire. Every weekend. Well, not every day, not every weekend. Somebody gets shot at you. It's sad. We need more power. I'm not saying that's the answer. God is the answer. But I believe if we had more fathers who were trying to be faithful, it would help a whole lot. So come on. I'm talking to somebody today. That's right where you are. That's your story. Come on. Ask for the help that you need. Ask for the prayer of the righteous to help you to be a father who is fixed. In the faith that calls your family needs. I'm talking to somebody today, you're not saying yes to Jesus. You're not obeying the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And perhaps you are a father. Well, your, your first challenge is, is that you, you can't be fixed in the faith because you have not obeyed the faith. You have to be in the faith. In order to be fixed in, in what God, if you're here today, if you're listening, uh, it is not by any coincidence. God, particularly if you are a father, God needs you. He wants you to be your father that is fixed in the faith by your family. And so if you're here today, you're not saying yes to Jesus. What God wants is for you to obey the glorious gospel, the good news. Death, burial, and resurrection. How Jesus died for your sins and How he was buried in a bar of tomb. Got up early Sunday morning with all power in his hands. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father, pleading for you and for me. God wants you to be saved. And you do that this morning by hearing the gospel of Jesus Christ. Believing that same 
Don't you? Repent it of your sins. Turn it from the way of the world. Turn it to the will of God. Confess in Christ to be the Son of God. You make that grand confession. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Be very immersed in water for the remission of your sins. Get up out of that water a brand new creature, a brand new creation. Be faithful unto death, and God will give you a prayer. The most favorite. Then, then, you can leave here this morning, not only a father, if you are a father, but even if you're not a father, you can leave here a baptized believer. You can leave here a father that is pitched on your way to being pitched in the faith for your family. And, and, and I can't think of any greater father's day gift. Lord, I have mercy. Then to be baptized Amen. for the remission of your sins. If you're subject to the same temptation, we bid you to come to your side.
have several uh, this morning at request. Uh, Sister Connor, uh, Sandra Connor Nims is saying, I'm having surgery on Wednesday. Uh, that's this week, uh, June 23rd. I have, to, I have desired the prayers of my brothers and sisters in Christ. My thoughts and prayers are always with you. So let's make sure we add Sister Nims to our prayer list this week. Uh, one of our patriarchs, uh, matriarchs rather, Sister Lydia Burnett says, I have been confined to my home for more than six months, and I seek your prayers. I love you and wish you God's blessing always. As we continue, let's continue to pray for Sister Burnett as well. Our sister gave me a tally saying, uh, please pray for my son, significant other. She is in a coma, uh, swelling up on the brain and irregular heartbeat. Her name is Tamika Tabo. So let's continue to let's pray for this, uh, sister uh, Tally's son, significant other, Ms. Tabo, uh, this week as her health, so her health may improve. We also have a note from Deborah Tucker. She's asking that uh, we have to celebrate her mother, Sister Linda May Garrison. Sister Garrison will be 91 years old on, on Wednesday, uh, the 23rd of June. Let's all uh, pray for her, for the blessing that God has given her as well and for her husband. Sister Gloria Brown, uh, she's asking that we pray for her. She says she's having a nerve block uh, uh, for her back on Tuesday, uh, June the 22nd, Tuesday morning. Uh, please keep her in our prayers. Also, there are those that are standing in need of prayer as well. Let's go to our Father and pray. Oh, gracious Father, we are so thankful for you and the many blessings that you continue to afford us. Father, we thank you for our death maker, the one that stood and gave us an opportunity for eternal life. Father, we thank you for your son Jesus, through him that we have forgiveness of sin. And Father, we can live in confidence. Father, that we can be uh, living in, in peace, regardless of uh, the things that we face in this world. Father, we come praying uh, on behalf of Brother Jackson. We are thankful for him, for his wisdom, for, his, for how he divides the word and to reach in and glean out the encouragement that we need to continue to fight the faith and go forward. Father, we come praying for those that are that are mentioned in the needs of prayer, we are asking that you would be with Sister Brownlee as she would um, have her surgery on uh, this Tuesday. We are asking that you would be with Brother uh, Sister Tyler's son, Ms. Talbot, as she uh, health. We pray, Father, that her health will improve and that she would return back to a reasonable portion of her health. Father, we are praying for our matriarchs and patriarchs, specifically Sister Burnett. We're praying for her confidence that she is confined, and we're praying that she would uh, understand and, and continue to, uh, our health will continue to improve. Father, we are also are praying for other sisters that mentioned that will be uh, having surgery as well uh, this week. On, on Wednesday. Father, we ask that you would be with her and that things would be well for her as she goes through uh, surgery, especially, Father, for all those that are doctors and nurses and those that will be caring for them. We, Father, we pray that they will have the love and they will maximize their talents. Father, we also pray for the life of Sister Garrison for her 91 years of service. Father, we ask you uh, continue to give her health and strength, and Father, we also are thankful for what 
what you have provided for her and the example that she's been on this earth uh, to give her family as well. Father, we ask you to continue to be with us as we uh, walk this walk each and every day, as we stand firm and, and people will see the light in us as we live our lives. These and many other blessings we ask in your darling son's name. Amen. Jesus rose with all power in his hands. And Jesus rose with all power in his hand. In his hand. You know that he died on Friday evening. But he rose on
As we worship at the point of giving this morning, we simply go back to the text that we touched on in our message this morning, uh, 1 Corinthians 16, uh, verses 1 through 4. Paul gives specific instructions uh, regarding the collection, regarding not giving. Uh, have you ever put something together that you purchased and in that package or whatever it is that you bought? There's usually a picture along with those directions as to what the product looks like as you're putting it together and once it's completed, what the finished product looks like. And have you noticed that if you follow those instructions to the T, when you finish what you put together, it looks just like the picture. It's the same thing with God. He gives us specific instructions regarding Christian living. He gives us a picture uh, as to what the finished product will look like. And if we follow those directions to the letter, when we finish following the, the, the instructions, it's going to look how they hear it. Like the finished, God gives us direction regarding collection. If we follow the product, or follow the instruction, rather, it'll look just like the finished product. And he says, if, if you give back to me the way that you have been prospering, I'll pour you out blessings that you won't have room to receive. If you follow the instructions, see that it don't end up, see what it end up looking like. The picture that God shows us in Scripture. Amen, somebody. That's the mind for that today. As you feel. The Boulevard, we continue to commend you. You're doing good, you're doing well. Let's continue to be the faithful people of God, faithful stewards that God has called us to be. So that we can keep looking like the finished product that God wants us to look like. Amen. Let's pray. We tell God our Father, we're so thankful for this blessed privilege that you have granted unto us to worship you with our gifts. We thank you for the greatest gift, and that is the gift of your son, Jesus. Father, our prayer is that we will follow the instructions that you have given us in Scripture as it relates to our giving. Do what you have uh, outlined for us to do, and you have given us the assurance that if we follow the instructions, the finished product will come out all right. Father, our prayer is that the receiving of these funds be used with wisdom, prudence, and guidance as we seek to do kingdom business in this community, in this city, uh, and more in the world is our prayer. By the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks always. Let us forgive us. Good morning, church. Good to bring you morning announcements. Uh, the virtual NTW will take place on uh, June 25th and 26th. Please visit the National Teachers Workshop website for more information. Attention sisters, we will not have our virtual Ladies Day prayer night tonight because of Father's Day. Please mark your calendars and be prepared to meet via Zoom on Sunday, July 18th at 6 o'clock p.m. A trip to Cape Cod, Martha's Vineyard, and Plymouth is going to be taking place June 4th through the 12th, 2022. If you are interested in this trip, there are flyers on the information table with full details. You may also see Brother Maurice Powers if you have any questions. Uh, we do have a note, and this one's from Sister Linda Ruffin. It says, thank you for your prayers for Mr. Ruffin. He is home and doing better, so we still need your prayers. Uh, thank you. Uh, our second note comes, and it says, we would like to wish our firstborn, Rico Mosby, a very happy birthday and Father's Day on today. Much love from mom and dad, and that's from brother and sister. Uh, on that, we also, we would like to continue to celebrate Father's Day. So I want to ask you all to stand again, but wave your hand. <laughs> we'll celebrate birthdays and anniversaries as well. So if you do have a birthday or anniversary, feel free to stand up. We'll give them a hand anyway. That's the series our morning announcements. Thank you. 
Church, amen. amen. We trust you have been encouraged as a result of you being here on today and that the word of God is truly blessed in your life. To all of our guests and friends, uh, we thank you so much for being our very special guest on today and visiting with us in our worship. Uh, we have truly been encouraged as a result of your being here. If you are visiting uh, in the audience in person, uh, we'd like to give you an opportunity to stand uh, and let us know who you are and where you're from. And to those who are visiting online, thank you for being with us as well. Because after all, the boulevard is a place of belonging that leads to a place of blessing. Amen, somebody. If you're visiting this morning and you'd like to stand, let us know who you are. Uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, out of those to my right. Visit. Are those to my right? You visited? All right. And to my left. Any visitors to my left? Look, uh, good to see you, uh, I believe. Is that Rico? I can't hardly tell with, with these men. Amen. <laughs> Rico and his family, maybe. Amen. And that family and my sorrow. Amen. Amen. Good to see y'all. Let's welcome to the Boulevard. Amen. Good to see you. Thank God for you. Uh, again, to all our visitors, thank you so much. Please, please uh, come back and be with us again. Don't forget, next Sunday, next Sunday, next Sunday, uh, following uh, worship, uh, we will remain for a few minutes for our uh, mid-year congregational update meeting. All Boulevard members, uh, all Boulevard family, please plan to remain for just a few minutes. We're going to try to get through services as quickly as we can uh, so that we won't keep you here an extended period of time uh, so we can share with you some uh, updated information, give you some information uh, regarding some future plans and that kind of thing uh, so that we're all on the same page. Amen? Amen. So please be mindful of that next Sunday immediately after worship. Uh, the counseling class that was scheduled for last Tuesday uh, will be rescheduled for this Tuesday at 6 p.m. Uh, I, I forgot I had my dates mixed up, so again, please charge it to my head and not to my heart. Uh, this Tuesday, 6 p.m., uh, Christ Center Counseling to Contend with COVID. And then uh, building project committee meeting this Thursday at 6 p.m. All building project committee uh, members this Thursday here at the building, we will need to have a meeting. Uh, and uh, this is information regarding the services for uh, Mr. Vincent Turner. This is the son of brother and sister Casey and sister Shirley. Uh, the visitation will be at uh, on tomorrow, the uh, 21st, uh, MJ Edwards uh, Funeral Home, uh, White Haven Center right down the street, or White Haven Chapel, right down the street from 4 until 7 p.m. That's tomorrow. That's the visitation. And then graveside services uh, will be Tuesday. Uh, at 1.30 p.m. at the West Tennessee uh, Veterans Cemetery. That is at Forest Hill. Uh, this is 4,000, I believe. Forest Hill, Irene Road. So those of you who can uh, uh, encourage this family uh, by attending the visitation or the graveside services, uh, please let's encourage this family. Uh, it's it's them now, we don't know when it'll be our time. So let's, let's be there for this family uh, as they prepare uh, to uh, funeralize their, their son. Again, to all of our fathers, happy Father's Day. We thank God for you. And as always, uh, we, uh, in a small way, like to, uh, would like to show our token of love and appreciation to all of our uh, fathers. All of our fathers, stand up again. If you're a father, stand, stand up one more time. Amen. Let's give all of our fathers a good day. 
Amen. We have some gifts going for all of our fathers, so they'll be on the tables uh, as you exit. Again, just a small token, we pray that you will enjoy them and be encouraged uh, by them. Uh, and again, we continue to thank God for you. Now, Brother Glenn was trying to give me a choke. Where is Brother Glenn? He's still back there. Yeah, he's back there. <laughs> Brother Glenn. He said, uh, you know, it's Father's Day. Uh, Y'all can take up a little off of all the fathers. <laughs> Brother Glenn, you ain't finna give me a choke with all these sisters.